The weather seems beautiful, but it's getting chilly. Try to keep yourself warm all the time, not to catch a cold. So don't regret after catching a cold. Take care of yourself, not to catch a cold. Okay. So you have to cover two chapters today. That's bad news, right? Good news is that you can do that. You can cover, you can cover two chapters today. So let's start off uh, from the oligopoly. So I refer you to table page six here. So let's quickly go over this one. Oligopoly, the situation is that there are simply uh, just a few players. So a anywhere between two or 12 or 20. So it depends. So how do we define It's not so clear. <coughs> But this is very unique as opposed to competitive or monopoly because all the time you have to th think of your enemies. So in perfect com competition, you don't need to think of your enemies because anyway, you, you don't have any control of the anything. You don't have any control of anything. Monopoly, you don't have an enemy in the first place right? to think of. But this is very unique. So sometimes you call, uh, theory is you call game theory. Game theory is, somehow you call game theory. Probably you heard of game theory before, game theory. So uh, the, the game between a few enemies, a few players, not that many, not that, uh, more than two, uh, less than maybe 20 or 100, it depends on the situation. Game theory. So normally we play a game with number of participants, not so many. So if you play a game with 100,000 people, is it a game or a mess? It's a mess. That's not, that cannot be a game. So is that clear? So when you say a game, then this is sometimes we call a strategic situation. So strategy is, in general, we discuss strategy in the management, but uh, somehow, as time goes by, I, I, I'm sure the concept will, of strategy will be introdu introduced in economics too. Because it's not so clear cut in the real world. Economics and business, right? Pretty much the same story. But somehow, because of historical accident, is the discipline of management is clear cut, uh, separated from the discipline of economics. But nature is the same story, making the best decision. Okay, to, to, to maximize net profit is the same. That's the same. But somehow, historical accident is separated. 경영학과, 경영학, 경제학과. But the discussion point is that that quality is the same thing, same thing actually. But somehow, 경영학과 is separated from 경제학과. So, strategy is a, a 경영학과 term in 경영학과. But anyway, this is a strategic situation. So, strategy is relevant only in this type of oligopoly. Competitors, uh, number of competitors limited. So you can identify your enemies, okay? This is the situation. So how to play your enemies? That's strategic situation, oligopoly in economics. So uh, strategy is all about beat or get beaten. Okay, live or die. You beat your enemies. Beat your enemies or you will get beaten. Okay? That's a strategic situation. Because you have cl cl clearly defined enemies, this one. So you have to outguess, outfox, and outperform your enemies. Outfox is that, fox is very clever, right? You are, you are more clever than, cleverer than your enemy, you call outfox your enemy. So I know sometimes, Always see Yerin Alfax is even if she is less productive. <laughs> okay, Alfax is the English word Alfax. Fax is clever, okay, canny, clever. So, con concentration ratio, so that's your job. I refer you to textbook concentration ratio. Collusion. So sometimes you agreement, clues and clue among oligopolistic players. So eight players, then eight of them meet together, sit together, and then make an agreement to control price or quantity. In fact, the same. 
to control the price or control the uh, quantity. Either way, effect is pretty much the same story. It's so occlusion. So, <laughs> damhap, Korean language, damhap. Recently, you, uh, I think you, you uh, heard about damhap pretty often from the news report, popular damhap between like uh, uh, petrochemical suppliers or even many cases, but anyway, we have heard of damhap case, that's collusion in English, collusion. It's illegal, of course, collusion. But it's consequent, uh, the official organization you call cartel. You make a, a, on a more or less consistent basis. Oh, we, are, we, will, we will work together, eight, of, eight firms in this industry, we will work together, we will go hand in hand, that, that type of, that's cartel. Agreement, agreement itself is called collusion, and then it's a kind of uh, organization you call cartel. Both are illegal, of course. Okay, so uh, uh, violation of this, uh, in general, in English, in uh, America, especially, anti Antitrust Act, America, Bandokjom Kyujepo, Korean language it, I, I referred here, that's Korean law. So you violate if you collude with your uh, uh, competitors, you violate this law. Dokjom Dokjom Kyujep with Gongjong Kure Kwanam Bamyu. Sishina, you have in your country your own like antitrust act, something like this. Okay, then now uh, the effect of uh, oligopoly. So let's simplify the situation. Okay, so it's mostly stories in this chapter, but only theories. This may or may not be helpful. Uh, so he doesn't explain this way. He explains using the numbers, uh, but uh, it's not that difficult to understand this situation. Now we assume collective optimum. So we assume there are, there are only two firms. That's what we are called duopoly. Duo, duo is the uh, mating agency. Uh, no, no, dating. I, I don't know. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Duopoly two, there are only two, duo, duo, duo is trio, duo. So do, do you uh, open thing together as a duo, Yijung Chang? Who of you? Have you tried a duo singing? <laughs> <laughs> duo is Yijung Chang, duo. Trio, Samjung Chang, duo, duopoly. There are only two players. To make the story simple, principles are all the same. So because sim so theories are, are simplifying the situation, right? All about, theories are all about the simplification of the situations. Okay. So we simplify situation right here. The case of duopoly, there are only two players. Three, triopoly, four, quadrupoly. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> I don't need to keep going, okay? Duopoly, two, only two players, duopoly. And then we assume, okay, uh, uh, no marginal cost. The situation, the textbook situation is that no marginal cost. Yes. The only thing is that you don't need okay, the, the thing, marginal cost. Okay. The situation is, okay, so this time again, we simplify the situation to understand the basic principles of the situation, duopoly situation. So, so additional simplification, number one, we have only two players in this market. Then num number two simplification is we assume any marginal cost away. Cost, all costs are sunk, sunk cost, no, no marginal cost. Okay. Then only, because marginal cost is zero. This is marginal cost, right? Remember this is, uh, Normal, ordinary P and Q. This is demand curve, market demand curve. Marginal cost is zero, supply is zero. This is marginal cost. As I say, our assumption is this is zero. Okay, this is zero. Is that clear? Yeah, in general, you say this is marginal cost, right? In general, to simplify the situation. Of course, if we, if, with this assumption, we can analyze this situation, but it's much more complicated. So, uh, so complicated that you may not understand the difficulty. So, because of this, it could be same like this, right? 
marginal, this, this is apply curve, right? MPC, supply curve is from marginal production cost curve. We all know that very, very clearly because I'm repeating this numerous times. I have repeated this numerous times. So supply curve is from marginal production cost curve, right? It, it could look, it can look like this, can look like, it can look like, can look like that too. Is everyone with me? So just special case is the marginal cost is zero. The textbook example is there's a well, spring. Okay? So natural spring there. You, you, you own the spring. You don't need any, any cost to sell the, the water, spring water to the people. No, zero cost. Is that clear to you? So only uh, concern of you or in, of only interest of yours is how much to sell at what price. That's your only concern, right? Is that clear to you? So you, you don't incur any additional cost. Another example is that you have harvested Chinese cabbages, bechu. The only thing is that you cannot sell the Chinese cabbages the next year, next spring or any next the following year. You have to sell it out. You have harvested all the Chinese cabbages. Okay? If, if you, you cannot store Chinese cabbages because if you do, it will decay. Okay? It, will, it, will, it will perish. So you can, it's of no use. You have to sell it out. The only concern is that how much revenue you can get. That's the, your only concern. So zero, zero marginal cost. Is that clear? All costs are sunk. You have harvested uh, 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 preservable uh, agricultural food or things like that. You cannot preserve Chinese cabbage. You simply you assume that. So at zero, this is realistic actually. Then the other case, textbook is that you have own simply natural spring. You, you don't need to pay any cost to sell the thing. Is that clear? So zero marginal cost situation. Then your only concern is what? Marginal revenue, right? Marginal revenue to you. So if you are the only supplier here, you are or you are the monopolist in this spring water market. Okay, so what would be your decision? Actually, we discussed this already because we discussed the case of monopolist Monday. We finished this story. So everybody is crazy for water, right? Because without water, they cannot, people cannot survive. It's, it's desperate need, it's absolutely need. But quantity is not unlimited. So this is demand curve. So this is a small community. Okay? So this is your market. This is your market. Eh? So if this is a given condition, you have two given conditions. One is demand curve to you, the other cost situation here. So what will be your decision, Sarchan? You have any idea? <coughs> Jay, do you have any idea? No. Who's who's the Jayun's neighbor? Jia, you Jian, any idea? <laughs> Next to a neighbor. No. Uh, the other way around. Hyunji. Your name is Sajang? <coughs> Sajang. No idea? Sajang, no idea, right? Uh, the neighbor. Hunji, ah, uh, Hunji. Lastly, Mingi, do you have any idea? <laughs> Old Mingi. I, I gave the one clue to you. This is marginal cost, right? What is the marginal revenue curve to them? Oh, this is monopolist, right? This is marginal revenue curve, right? Halfway through. I said that halfway through is the marginal. Okay. Anyway, I explained that, right? This is demand curve. Monopolist marginal revenue curve is located below the D curve. I explained that. That's the main point of the Monday's lesson, right? Jian, Jian, don't you recall that? Monday we discussed this. Remember the case P1, P, P0, P1? We discussed that. 
Okay, you return to the, because I, I don't have time to, because we have a long way to go. I can explain this one more time. I simply, I refer you to the, the notes, notes for the, the, the day before yesterday. Okay. Then, this is marginal revenue curve, right? Marginal revenue curve. Then, where is our equilibrium? Your equilibrium, our equilibrium. Okay, you keep supplying water, right? Until when? This is the point. Th I said this is marginal cost. This is marginal revenue. This is the point. Is it clear? Actually, what point? Actually, exactly midpoint here. The first half edge is this half edge through. So if you have learned very basic of as I say, calculus, you can find that very easily, but be because you didn't learn calculus, and you have it through, is just keep this in mind, okay? Straight line demand curve, straight line in this case, is only in this case, this holds. Straight, a straight line demand curve, okay? Marginal revenue curve is this, half way through. Exactly half through is this one, same, same thing. And then this is optimum quantity, right? Okay, this question is for Sohyun. So this is your optimum quantity, right? So what would be your optimum price? Zero or this or that, what, what? This is right? This will be your optimum price, right? So, P star, Q star. This is your optimum. Why there is? Here, you, you have zero cost, right? So, your concern is that maximize this. Remember, net revenue is always total revenue minus total cost, right? What is the total cost? Total cost is zero. So, what is the total revenue? P multiplied Q, right? So P multiplied Q is this one. This is P, it's midpoint is. So if Q1, price is high, but quantity is small. Here, quantity is big, but price is small, right? Is it clear? I explained this, and then, uh, when I explain when we study, when we study uh, elasticity, I pointed out, pointed out there, midpoint is, what was, here is what, 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 elasticity at this point was what? You don't recall this. This it was one here. Okay. I explained this before. Elasticity is, midpoint elasticity is exactly one. Okay. Here, what was the elasticity here? Does anyone recall what was the elasticity here? What is the price elasticity? This one. This is price elasticity of demand. Okay. Q delta Q delta Q. What is this? What do you call this? Changyun, what do you call this? Delta Q, o, delta P over P. Bongyun. No, not marginal. Percentage change in price. Hanung, do you recall that? A little, because you missed the class when we studied. This was a joke, of course. <laughs> you call this, remember, delta P is change, right? A change over itself is percentage change, right? Okay, let's ex let me explain this one more time. Yesterday, the price was 125. Mm -hmm. Today, 130. This is P. What is the change in price, delta P? Five, right? Okay. So, 125.5. How much is this? Four percent, right? 
what is this? P, delta P, right? So price change, four percent change in price, right? Is that clear? So you could, this is nothing other, this notation is nothing other than percentage change. Delta P is just change. Delta is okay, notation for change, Greek, everywhere in economics and in mathematics too, huh? mathematics too. In this regard, economics is a simply extension of, an extension of mathematics. So delta everywhere, delta stands for change. So delta P, change in price. Over P, percentage change. Is that clear? Okay, so uh, because of time constraints, I spent on already 30 minutes it's, it's problem. So anyway, this is percentage change in price. This is percentage change in demanded quantity, demanded, right? Because we talk about demand curve. Percentage change in quantity demanded. Just what we call <coughs> price elasticity of demand. I'm going to recall that even if you are late. Do you recall that? Okay. okay. Anyway, uh, here at this. At that time, does it equal anyway? This is midpoint was I explained that at this point. Remember, this is definition of, um, with a minus sign because this is moved opposite direction. Price goes up. This goes down, right? Because we attach normally on the minus sign here. So. At the midpoint, this E is 1. Here, here, here is what? What is unique here? This point. Is quantity 0? The quantity is 0, right? Quantity is 0. Then what is this? Quantity is 0. That's infinity. That's infinity. Then this, this is what is 0? Price is 0, right? This price P is 0. This, is infinity, 1 over infinity is what? Zero. This is zero. Okay, keep this in mind. Okay, now it's very useful anyway. <coughs> Elasticity on the straight line is okay, very useful to know. Very useful. Okay. So, here, uh, uh, you can verify this very easily too, without uh, referring to calculus, you can de verify that too. So anyway, okay, as a way of reviewing elasticity, okay, so if elasticity is bigger than one, what does it mean? You re reduce price one by one percent, quantity will increase by how much? More than one percent, right? Your strategy is to reduce or to increase to raise price. Reduce price, right? Was it by design or by chance? Hence was right, I know that. Eh? But was it designed by or by chance? Only two answers, right? <laughs> by design, I know, I know that. That's a joke. She's so intelligent. So that's a peanut to Hyunji. So we are here. Do we increase or decrease price? Decrease price. We are here. Do we increase or decrease price? Increase price. Here. You stay there, right? That's our optimum. Is that clear? So many ways to reach the same conclusion. Either the analysis of monopoly analysis or elasticity approach. Conclusion is the same story here, huh? middle point is the same. Okay, so this is the from infinity, like maybe you get right, right, hundred, hundred thousand, ten thousand, thousand, ten, nine, zero, one. Here, zero point nine, zero point eight two, something like five, like this. So here is one half, a third, okay, a fourth. Something like it, one tenth. It keeps decreasing here. Okay, subsequently, eventually, zero. Is that clear? Dong Yun, is this clear to you? Okay. So there is one, one over two here. So, okay. The case number one, we are in monopoly. 
which will be our decision here okay now we are in duopoly our today's goal uh, this hour's goal is monopoly analysis of monopoly we are in monopoly so now we, are, we make a collusion it, it, even if it is illegal let's assume okay it's illegal so for the two of them what, what would be what position would be the optimum both of them collectively i say collectively what would be the optimum this point, this point right collectively because collectively means in any case you cannot make your revenue any bigger than this one right you cannot make because you have only one party of your con consumer groups right so all they pay you collectively individually that's a maximum right maximum money you can squeeze <laughs> let's say squeeze okay from your perspective you squeeze money out of you poor consumers right okay so maximum amount of money you can squeeze out of <laughs> poor consumers is this much is right Changyan, are you with me in this regard so collectively or not that's the maximum thing right so we, even if you are in duopoly what is the collective optimum this is right is that clear you simply squeeze this amount of money share them equally or depending on the situation more powerful you know, in general yerin takes lion's share right they work together, Lerin takes 80% 80, 80 poor Gyeonghwa takes only 20% and the division is between your power game between two of you, right? Collectively, that's very clear, Jayun, right? That's very clear. Collectively, two, two, two of them together, what is, what is the optimum? This is the optimum, right? That's collectively. So if two of you include, make an agreement, gentleman's agreement, cartel, this will be your choice. The division between you is the different story. That's your, between the situation of contribution of this venture or anything. You may okay, peacefully uh, agreement between. Because anyway, this is collective optimum. Okay, this is collective optimum. Okay, so far, so good. Okay, I hope you understood this one. So, yeah, did you understand? Did you follow me? <coughs> Somewhat, okay, more or less so. Huh? Ungun, you understand that, right? Even if you are late. <laughs> okay. Now, a little bit tricky. Okay. Subtle. Okay. It, 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 a, little, a little bit tricky to understand. Hope you understand my logic here. Now, collectively, everybody knows this. Optimum. So somehow you are here. Now, when, now what? Okay. Uh, by law, you are not supposed to include any agreement or uh, contract or anything like that between two of you. So somehow you, you are here. We are here. Then incentive, think about that. Incentives to individual players. Now Mingi and Sangyan, two, they are two players. So collectively you understand somehow peacefully or, or by historical accident, you are here, originally here. Huh? It's quite logical, right? Because it's anyway to, to optimum. Or they are brothers, okay? They are brothers. <laughs> and they, they are inherited the business from their parents. Now, they, they have separate business, right? All of a sudden, become enemies, right? Previously, <laughs> okay, they were they are brothers. But now, they become enemies, right? Against each other. Then, so, as brothers, they were here. So think about that. Enemies, they have become enemies. So individually, okay, he doesn't know his intention. Okay, Mingyi doesn't know Sang Hyun's intention. Okay, but simply, he thinks that he, this business is from his own perspective. Okay, then there is one effect, output effect, price effect. Then, Probably everyone wants, each one, oh, Sang Yen wants to expand or uh, uh, that's what you call, retrench your business. Which one? So, so, your business bigger or smaller? Any case, in, in this business, you are in this business. So individually, would you like to expand your business or reduce your size of your business? Expand, right? So 
so everyone's temptation is expansion. Is expansion. Okay. So monopoly, if you expand, you are here. You are here. Okay. Then you expand. Let's say you expand up to here. Okay. So up to here. You would like to here. Okay. Let's say this is one percent. You are in in this region. You are approaching here. Okay. So price effect is that how much? So, okay. Let's say. Okay, I I would say let's say. Okay. So to that we work this uh, the, the inverse order reverse order A B. So expansion, right? Expansion is that now, if, let's simply think about that. He wants to move this direction. Eh? So, uh, let's simply say, it. he wants A to B. This B is 1 over 2. This is 1. What I mean is that this is E. Okay, let's clarify here. X, as I explained before, this is midpoint is where this is no one. I'm sorry. One. Okay. You don't you don't know exactly where, but somewhere here is one over two. Okay. One over two. As I say, as I explained, we start from infinity to zero. So in between one and zero, one over two, one over three, one over four, something like this. So one over ten thousand, one over one million, eventually zero. So somehow, okay, well, exactly, uh, I can explain this. Well, I can uh, tell you where this is, but for this time, not to make uh, uh, my story overly complicated. Let's just simply assume there is a point where this is exactly 1 over 2. Of course, below this, there's 1.3, then 1.4, 1.10, something like this one, okay. Then my issue is there, our issue is here, your issue is here. So if okay, A to B, A to B, let's simply say, to just simplify the situation, moving A to B, monopoly case, output is you increase 1%, one, 1 what will happen to the price? You increase 1%, right? You move to here, 1%. Okay, how much this will be? Price reduction. One more time. You want to add here, from here to there. Okay, let let me be precise. You want to Q delta Q. This is what I mean is that quantity here, quantity here. This one. Well, I hope this is not overly complicated to you. One more time. This is all about comparison of percentage change in quantity to percentage change in price. That's unless this is all about, right? Is that clear? Okay. So I have only 10 minutes. So I think we can, anyway, delta Q, this is elasticity. One more time. Denominate is percentage change in price, while numerator is percentage change in quantity. So our issue right now is whether to expand our business to from A to B. Okay. One more time, situation. Originally, they were brothers helping their parents. Now they got separated into two different business. So originally they were here, absolutely here. Two of them were here. Now Sangyan okay, considers whether to make this movement, this move, this move. Uh, in, in, uh, uh, management, we say move, move, okay, or form the move. Okay, whether to make this move or not, okay, it's his consideration. If he were, a monopolist, would, 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 he, would he take the move or not? Would he make the move or not? 
That's a big question, right? So this is Q delta Q. See, my ca our question is that, so let's say Q A, Q B, okay? whether to move from Q A to Q B is our decision right now. Monopolist, as a monopolist, would you do that? No, because by this is the definition, right? To move from A to B, okay, this is change in quantity, right? Sales volume. How much price do you have to change? Remember, this is how this is one over two, right? Is it clear? You have to make what? One, two. Okay, what I mean is that if this is 1%, you have to reduce price by 2%. Is that clear? Okay, so what I mean is that to be precise, delta P should be twice Q delta Q. That's the definition of here. What is here? Definition of elastic, that's the definition of elastic. Is 1 over 2 is this one, right? Okay. <laughs> if you don't understand here, try to digest it. There's no magic, okay? as I keep saying. Okay, read it carefully, review it carefully, you can understand that relatively easily. One more time. Yeah, this is a final, <laughs> final explanation. Collectively, as a monopolist, market equilibrium is here. So now, as a duopolist, individually you think, you consider whether to move this direction or not. Okay. So this direction, what is unique? A, elasticity is one. B, elasticity is or half. So to move this, this if this is one percent, how much this should be? Two percent, right? What is this? One over two is that Q delta Q P delta P, right? This is a half. Okay. <laughs> You don't seem to be convinced. But anyway, time is limited. I have to wrap this up. Okay. What can I do now? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so this time again, all that I can say is that if you, <coughs> you understand, it's, that's great. If you don't, that's fine too. Yeah, because this is additional thing. Because anyway, he tries to explain this without without any logic, he simply, without showing anything, he simply just explained the, the consequences of this decision. So in the way, I, will, I will want to, wanted to explain why that is. So still I'm on the way. Let me finish up this quickly because it's, we are approaching the break time. So, so, okay. No other alternative right now. You alone. You wouldn't do that because as you see, you move this direction alone, you are here. Okay. <coughs> your play storage is different. It's going to be different. Individual incentive is different than individual optimism is different from collective optimism. That's the point here. Okay, that's what you call Nancy equilibrium. Okay, Nancy equilibrium is there. Individual optimum but collective sub-optimum. That's Nancy equilibrium. So let's see how, how different this is. So general equilibrium is the individual optimum and collective optimum. Remember, this is collective optimum. You, you learned that already. In, in, in ordinary market, so DS is, this is market equilibrium, right? That's the consequence of individual optimum decision. And then you find that out, this is a societal optimum because this is the point where societal surplus or total surplus gets maximized. You know that clearly, right? So in this case, in this case, 
individual, what is good for individual is good for the whole. But this is not like that. Individual optimum is collective suboptimum. That's Nash equilibrium. But still equilibrium. It's equilibrium is that, is that it, people tend to stay at that point. That's the definition of equilibrium. That's equili equilibrium. No incentive to the current situation. That's the definition of equilibrium. An equilibrium, that's a situation where no one has an incentive to change the current situation. That's the definition of an equilibrium. So that's individual, effectively that means individual optimum is equilibrium. So in, in, individual optimum is collective optimum, right? Oh, no, no. Individual equilibrium is collective equilibrium. Nobody wants to make any move. The system doesn't move either, right? Is that clear? One more time. Individual equilibrium is collective equilibrium. Because in this room, say, nobody wants to miss this course. So, kyung do you want to miss this course? <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> so that's right. That's individual equilibrium, right? Then the whole wouldn't like to miss this course, right? <coughs> Are you with me? So individual equilibrium is collective equilibrium because nobody wants to move. The system doesn't move, right? But when it comes to optimum, it's a different story. Individual optimum doesn't necessarily result results in result in a collective optimum. The typical case of which is Nash equilibrium. Nash equilibrium is the individual optimum, but not collective optimum, but still in, in individually collective equilibrium. Because individually, no one wants to move, make any move. So why that is? Now let me quickly wrap this up in five minutes because time is ticking and we have long way, a long way to go today. Duopoly. Now, okay. Sangyeon Sang wants to make a move to here, there. Okay, so he wants to move. Q, delta Q. This is, okay. Oh, no, no. So we have to think about individually, duopoly, and the collect effect is different. Mm -hmm. So Sang Yun wants to make move, delta Q. No, no, P delta P. No, no, I'm sorry, P delta P. I no sorry Q Q. He makes a move, right? Okay, this is one percent change. And then, collectively, what is it, this? One percent change, or let's what is a small number here? Because he's one of the players. Q. There are two players. Okay, he's alone. He, he moves okay, this much amount. What is, what is the impact to the market? Okay, so this is 1 over Q delta Q. Market wise, individual, because he, he, his share of the market or half of the market. From his perspective, his perspective, he expanded his business by 1%. That's equivalent, market equivalent is just one half, right? So price effect is, his output effect is 1%, price effect is just half of this one. So half of this one is what? Okay. Let's say, this is Q over Q, delta Q. Okay. Is that clear to you? Because of this alone, 10% up to here, he, as he, he moves, until he reaches here, he reaches here, okay. 
he, he, incre he expect from his perspective, his perspective, he expand his volume by 1%, price doesn't decrease by 1%, right, up to here. Because his expansion by 1% is from the market perspective on half a percent, one, half a, a point, right? Because of this, so this is it. So individually, he, his temptation, his incentive to move to this direction. The same story to Mingi. Right? That's his optimum in his case. Separately, you are the same story to you. Eh? So incentive to one play, you move to this direction. Incentive to Mingi, same story, move to the direction. And collectively, you will end up here. Great. That's the point here. Okay. So time is up already. Okay. A little bit, as I say, a little bit tricky and complicated, a little bit subtle. But think hard, you can understand what I mean right here. <coughs> then the final point is, okay, this Menke explains in the textbook, <coughs> what page is. Uh, so in a sense, he tells us the final outcome only, without going through this uh, story. So now we are on the power page seven of our class note. Then here, number of tower page seven, number of firms here, okay, number of firms increases incentive to diverge. So the conclusion is that page uh, 355, monopoly, duopoly, oligopoly, perfect competition in this way. Why that is there, this one. Let me finish my story here. So we start off uh, with uh, our monopoly situation, and then we will end up with perfect competition. Then what change we will see? Okay. One more time. If you understand this, that's great. <laughs> if you don't, that's fine too, because one. This is monopoly equilibria. Huh? That's just so very easy. Okay. This is Nash equilibrium duopoly. Okay. This is third Nash equilibrium trap triopoly. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> Three party monopoly. Okay. Let's go. Four party monopoly. Ten party monopoly. No, no, oligopoly. This is. This is Perfect competition, P perfect competition here. So market will go here. Okay. As number of players increases, it go down here. So monopoly equilibrium here. Okay. So monopoly equilibrium here. Duopoly equilibrium here. Triopoly equilibrium, quadruple equilibrium, quintuple, I don't know, quintuple. <laughs> okay, please, here. here. Pretty much the extension of the same logic. Okay. Anyway, finally, what is the most beneficial to the whole society? That's the question. Okay. So, if monopoly, what is the societal surplus? This is the price. This is the price. Okay. This is the price. No discrimination. What is the Consumer surplus. This is consumer surplus, right? What is this? <coughs> Produces a surplus, right? Sum them up, total surplus. What do we call this? Remember, marginal <coughs> thinking, this is optimum, right? Marginal thinking, this is marginal cost society wise. From the society perspective, this is marginal utility. And at this point, optimum, right? Then, perfect competition, this will be the societal surplus, total surplus, right? Now, monopoly, this is empty. What do you call that? That will last. Sikchung in Sonsil. Sikchung in like Tejun, 
So he doesn't contribute to anything and he eats up everything, Sik Chung, without contributing to the society. Is that clear? Okay, that way it lost. So now I said, I said, duopoly, Ikiru will be here. Okay? Ikiru will be here. What is, what is this? Consumer surplus. Producer surplus. Dead weight loss gets smaller. Three. Smaller. Four. Smaller and smaller eventually disappears, right? From this oh, great message you can get is as number of player okay, gets bigger, okay, dead weight that weight loss gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Perfect competition, no dead weight loss. Okay. This is the, from this you can, a very strong message to the society. The number, the number of player gets bigger, <coughs> almost automatically society will benefit. Of course there is redistribution income between two different groups. So moving from here, Monopoly to duopoly, you can easily understand that eh? consumers benefit at the expense of suppliers. Is it clear? Okay. Producers. So finally, so to make the story simpler, the previous table is it's, it's, it's a complicated story. So simply, you think in this way, okay, you move A to B. Simply, forget everything else. You move A to B. A to B. If you are monopoly, to move A to B, to, in, to increase quantity 1%, you have to reduce price 2%. Okay. Okay. This is, what I mean is that you have to reduce price twice as much. That's the point here. Here, to your case, say, individually you expand 1%, but collectively that's one, only one half percent, right? Because he shares, even he shares right now, uh, Sangyeon and Mingi evenly share, evenly share the market. He expand one percent, but collectively that's one, just only one half percent, right? Then collectively one half percent, this double, my price will change double that much, one percent. So from your perspective, one percent, one percent, you are two actually. If you are rational, you are to make them move individually. You have to take. So, same story to Mingi. The individual, you have to move and make this move as long as you are rational. As I keep saying, if you are irrational, like uh, <laughs> Sayan, you don't do, you can do anything. <laughs> but is that clear? More comfortable, right? Now you are more comfortable than this. Number is, number is more comfortable than notice. Okay, then this is gone. This is history. Forget about this now, momentarily. Now, <coughs> I refer you to figure one, chapter, what is that? Chapter 17. That's the famous Barney and Clyde, okay, prisoner's dilemma, matrix. Okay, dile matrix. So, you have to be able to read this table. Okay, so what page is it in? What page? This we are in chapter seven, chapter seventeen. So th three fifty six page three hundred fifty six. Okay, here, Bunny and Clyde. Okay, so the, unfortunately, both of them got caught by Detective Colombo. Detective Colombo. Okay. De Detective Colombo approaches them individually. Okay. You offer, show this table to Bunny and Clyde separately. So you make a choice between two of them. Okay. So reading is you, this one. Separately, they cannot communicate between themselves. Bonnie, Bonnie and Clyde. So only option is you make your own decision all by yourself. Clyde, you, have to, you make your decision all by yourself. Okay. So, <clears throat> okay, this is the 
the, these are the payoff, confess or not. You have only two options, right? So I, I approach. So, Kyungha is Bunny. Yerin is Clyde. Okay? I, I say Bunny. So, you make a choice. Confess or not, up to you. Okay? Confess or keep silent, up to you. So, if you confess, this is table, this one. So, she doesn't know, okay? Bunny, Bunny is he, right? No, no, she, Bunny, she doesn't know. Bunny, does anyone see the movie? Does anyone do unforced assignment over the UK? That's a very interesting movie. Why, why don't you see? It's much more fun than like Dodungnom, Doduktel. There's no comparison between Doduktel and something. Ber Berlin something? Ber Berlin what? Berlin? Berlin? I, I stopped seeing that. Really, really boring. Doduktel. I stopped short of watching the movie. It's really boring TV. So simple. So simplistic, as I say, as I should say. Actually, I, I'm very Berlin. I didn't have an interest in that, but uh, Bunny and Clyde is highly, highly fun and interesting, thrilling, like thrilling. Doctor, do, did you feel any thrill watching Doctor? Was it comedy? It was a comedy actually, not <laughs> not thriller. Is it a thriller? It's not a thriller. Absolutely not. That's not a thriller. Okay, anyway, anyway, so, Bunny, this is your decision, okay? So, your payoff table is there. So, you have only two situations. Okay. She, doesn't, oh, she doesn't know anything about, Bunny doesn't know uh, anything about his attention. Here he is, he, right? <laughs> so, from her perspective, her perspective, there would only two possibilities, right? Okay, case number one, what if Clyde confesses? In which case I am better off? Am I better off? You, you, you read it. Confess or not? Confess, right? That's a dominant strategy. What is that? No matter what she does, no matter what he does, he will be, she will be better off. When she confesses, is that clear? That's what I call, no matter what you, the other party does, that's clear cut. That's what I call dominant strategy. No question about that. So she confesses. Same story, the mirror image of that is from her. Okay? From her, no matter what, no matter what Bunny does, Clyde will be better off by confessing. Is that clear? So, individually, dominant strategy is confess confessing, right? What is the collective outcome? That's the worst case. Worst case, right? So, this is Nash equilibrium. Okay? Nash equilibrium is equilibrium. Both confesses at the equilibrium. Why equilibrium? No one has any incentive to get out of the situation. No matter what the other touch, okay? So, equilibrium but not optimum. Actually, the, the opposite of the optimum, right? That's what I call Nash equilibrium. Equilibrium but not optimum. Okay? So, th the rest is all interesting stories. So, the stories are reading. So, the only thing I want you to do here is that to be able to read this table. Okay. You will see this type of table, maybe from time to time, I'm not sure. Uh, the rest of, oh, it, my, microeconomics will come to this time one more time, but that's basically the definition of this st story. So international economics and the war game between Cold War situation, the rest of the story is just a story, and read it through. One, one more time, this table, being able to Read this table, that's it. So remember, dominant strategy you did. No matter what your partner does, your optimum is confess. 
Okay, then that's very relatively simple, right? <coughs> then let's move on to. Uh, I refer you to second half of page seven. So here, prisoner dilemma, middle of page seven, prisoner dilemma. What I we, we just discussed right now. And then Nash equilibrium, collective worst case always, okay? but equilibrium yet. Okay? So market variables competitive, it's a kind of summary. Okay. So number of what defines what defines number of players in the market? The two concepts. One is barriers, market barriers, two types of okay. So uh, uh, one classification is the ex exit barriers and entry barriers, and the other category is the technical barriers and institutional barriers. Okay. So the easiest example is the opening of Samgyeopsal store, okay, three-folded pork store or a steel mill. Okay. Exit barrier, steel mill, or oh, entry barrier, entry barrier, right? <coughs> First of all, you have to get license from the, you cannot arbitrarily build a, a steel mill here and there, you cannot do that. You need license from the government first of all, and then you need have to sunk big money, right? Capital is another entry barrier. The exit barrier, you have to hire a lot of people. Then you have a chunk of, chunk of steel ingots, right? right? So if you close the steel mill, is it easy to close a steel mill? It's almost impossible. Think about it. POSCO, what, what would happen if you close the POSCO? Disaster, right? Everywhere. You can almost impossible to do that. So that's exit barrier. You cannot exit easily. You cannot enter easily. So, so monopoly you will see, right? Posco is monopoly or oligopoly. But Sangyeosal store, or the most popular one is the chicken store right now. Right? It's everywhere. Chicken store is everywhere, right? Easy come, easy go. Not highly competitive. Understandable. Then, then the rest is the. Okay, the, the detailed story is Yuaja. Finally, top of page eight. So different situation. So two by two matrix. This we call two by two matrix. This is a matrix. Okay. Mat matrix is Sudoku game, right? You know, you, you love Sudoku game. That's matrix. Three by three. Sudoku game is three by three in general. We call three by three matrix. This is two by two matrix. So it's. And especially management, management people are stupid. So <laughs> <laughs> business people are stupid. They get confused if you use a three by three matrix. But this is two by two matrix. This is very useful. Okay. So this one, your category is the entry barrier. So as you, we checked out. So samgyeopsal store, chicken store, entry barrier is low. Exit barrier is low. So perfect competition. Okay, steel mill, entry barrier is high, X barrier is high. Okay, then somewhere in between, in, that defines this entry and X barriers are key determinant of market situation, how competitive that is. Now, we have only 40 minutes, oh no, 30, 30 minutes to cover this chapter. But basically, don't worry, don't worry. Chapter 18 is just application of uh, what we learned so far. Okay. No magic in here. Huh? Just you follow me here. Huh? And then additionally, more than that, we discussed <laughs> some of this in chapter 13 already. So this is kind of, there is duplication between this chapter and chapter 13. So somehow he has, he, he, he keeps having the duplication here and there. It's kind of waste of pages. But anyway, so you follow me. That's relatively easy. Oh, let's start from this na narratives first. So I refer you to page eight. Here, the the labor market principle is exactly the same for capital market or land market. We rarely discuss land market because modern day econ economy. Uh, Land matters very little, if any, very little. So we, we may disregard. So there are only two 
production factors. One is labor, the other. What is the other factor, Gihun? I say there are two production factors, two okay, major production factors. One is labor, what is the other? What did you say? Capital. Huh? Uh, the principle is that the market mechanism is all the same. So if you are uh, comfortable with labor market, the other market is just the, the, the repetition of the same story. Here, so production factors and their prices, wages for labor. So now we are in the middle of page eight, right here. Production factors. Okay. Production factors, there are two, okay, largely. Wages for labor, okay. rent for uh, land, or rental price for capital here. So maybe uh, it's strange to you, but we are in microeconomy right now, microeconomics, microeconomics. So price of capital equal rent, same story. Actually, rent is a generic name for fees for something uh, which, whose uh, su supply is limited. Rent, that's rent. So rent, the reason why we have to pay rent to uh, uh, land, is, land, land is limited. Same story. Capital is Short term capital is limited. You have to pay rent, you say in that way. Rental charge for land and rental charge for capital too. Okay. We are in microeconomics and then we will see talk differently in the macroeconomics. So the price of capital <coughs> macroeconomics we, we will see interest rate. That's macroeconomy. We are not microeconomy, capital, rent. Okay, now, so modus operandi of the uh, factory market. Sangyan and company hires Gyeonghwa. That's labor, right? It, this, this employer, this, she's employee. You are the firm, she's household. So why do you hire her? Because she's pretty? Or because you love her? No, right? The only reason, it's not, when he, Sangyan hires her, it's not hiring her, her right? Not, it, it, not her merit, but what really does he buy? It's her work, her work, right? So that's, that's the reason why he called derived demand. Derived demand. So demand for production factor is derived demand. Yeah. Why, why do you call in that way? Because what you really buy is not per se. Labor per se or capital per se, it's a service. Is that clear? Labor service, what you buy is labor service, not the person, labor him, him, right, right? So you call derived demand. Then here, in theory, the mechanism, labor market theory is exactly the same story because the same story means how much to buy, how much to supply, all about what? What's the key decision principle underneath this decisions, principle. What are the principles underneath these uh, uh, decisions? How much to buy? I mean, how much labor to buy? How much labor to sell? What's the uh, uh, underpinning principle for these decisions? Maximize profit, right? Marginal thinking. Don't forget that. Marginal thinking, always exactly the same story. So here, uh, what I mean is that theory-wise, Okay, labor market is exactly the same as product market, but in the reality, labor people, right? So you have to think about their mentality too. There's a, some social uh, flavor in there, or, or humanistic flavor is practically, but theoretically, exactly the same as this rational thinking. Okay? So no humanist, humanism, no nothing. So you follow me right now. So that said, Okay, so here we also, so the, each case to analyze is the perfect competitive situation. Then as a firm, Sangyan faces two markets. One is product market. He's uh, one of the so many, so, so many competitors. Product market, Sangyan and the company is in perfect competition. Factor market, he is in uh, is perfect competition too. We mean by that, <coughs> uh, 
that he doesn't have any control over the price of his product. Okay? He doesn't have any control over the wage of the labor. Is that clear? For both markets, okay, he is in perfect competition. So either market, he takes the price as simply given. P is given to him. W, small w, wage. The small w is for wage. Wage is given to him. So on the condition of this, then, so the reason why Sang Hyun hires Kyung is not she, he likes him, but to have her work, produce products. So poor Kyung keeps working. L. Okay. She makes something cute. This is like a production function. We discussed this in chapter 13 already. Do you recall that, Jia? I don't think she does. You do? So here, why does it concave to the? Remember, this is K. This is Q. We call F L production function. Okay. Why does? Why is this concave to the origin? Diminishing marginal. Exactly, diminishing marginal product of labor. Okay. So here, initially, okay, she works. Kyunghwa initially in the morning she works very very diligently. So an hour, an hour. L is. Oh, by the way, the uniform. I mentioned this already, right? L, unit of metric, is. Per person hour, okay, keep this in mind, person hour in C, in Korean language, that's unit, in C. You know that, right? Okay. So we need to make one of this, we need 10 person hours, 10 person hours. There are many ways, right? I hire one person and have him work 10 hours. I hire two persons, work them each five hours. I hire four person who have them work two, two, two and a half each. Okay, Th three people, three, three point three, 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 three hours each. Okay, and then hire two, two persons, five each, or ten person, an hour each. That's the same story here, huh? the same story. But anyway, so uh, you assume only Kyunghwa. So yeah, it depends on how many hours she works. So, okay. okay. Initially, on an hour, she is very ambitious and works very diligently. Okay. Actually, in a sense, she enjoys working here initially. Okay. So, as it goes by, okay, pain looms large as time goes. And then she becomes tired and, and sick of working. <laughs> is it clear? So, it is working this way, this way. So this is L. So this one, this is what we call MPL. Marginal product of labor. MPL. MPL okay, is declining. This is L. So this is a value, right? Some type of value. So initially you draw this one, MPL. <coughs> Unfortunately, this is not in terms of money. Right? So we multiply here price. That's money. Okay? That's money. This is physical quantity. And then physical quantity is declining. This MPL is declining. We, this is what we just found out. Right? MPL is, MPL is declining. MPL is nothing other than slope. Declining. Slope here, slope here. This is steeper, this letter, right? This is MPK, bigger, this is smaller. So as you higher, okay? Gets tired, Kenwa gets tired, this one. And less and less, less productive here, okay? But originally, this is money, but quantity. But turn it into money, that's very easy, okay? So sometimes you call marginal revenue product of labor. This is nothing other than P multiplied MPL. So only difference, this is not money. This is not money, this is money. Right? Because 
all the comparison, we compare things in terms of money. Wage is money. So, is that clear? Marginal revenue product, we call 한계 수입 생산물. 한계 노동 수입 생산물. 한계 자본 수입 생산물. We say in that way. So, marginal product of labor, that's quantity. Marginal revenue product of labor, that's money. Okay. Likewise, marginal product of capital, that's quantity. Marginal product of Marginal revenue product of capital, that's money. Okay, how to turn one into another? It's very simple. P. So, so in an hour, she makes, let's just say, five of this. Kyungwa makes five of these empty cans. We assume this is full, okay. <laughs> so, five. Five cans. But it sells at 500 won. Okay, what is? Her marginal revenue product of labor. Yeah, 2,500 won, right? 2,500 won. Is that clear? That's so simple. Oh, this is. So now you are ready to, okay, uh, analyze the, the whole story. What is this? M, R, P, L, marginal revenue product of labor. This is SH and company, Sangin and company. So his decision is how much or how, how much, how many to hire, how many hours from, to buy from Gyeonghwa. Okay. So what is the decision? Assuming he is rational, he had, has to think where? At the margin. Rational people think at the margin. What that, more specifically, what that means? He has to compare marginal benefit to marginal cost. So what is his marginal benefit? This is it. Remember, this marginal benefit. In this marginal revenue product of labor is only benefit from hiring her, right? Because it, 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 beauty doesn't matter. Okay. His, her humanity doesn't matter. That's what we, we assumed, right? Only thing we buy from her is the, Working service and okay, labor service. Okay. So, labor service is benefit, produce something. So, this is marginal benefit. So, to from this is SH and company, Sangin and company, SH and company. Is that clear? Okay. So, we have one thing marginal benefit. So, how much does he cost? Does she cost? Wage. Okay, an hour to hire her an hour. How much do you ask? One million won an hour. Okay. One, she, she asks one million won an hour. So to hire, okay, first an hour, how much? What is the cost? One million won, right? You, you want to hire her 10 hours. What's the 10th marginal cost of 10th hour? One million won. 100th hour. One million one. So, regardless of this L, this is wage is what? Your marginal cost, right? Okay, marginal cost. So, if W1, how, how much hours she will, he, will, he, will she work? <laughs> w1, L1, okay. <laughs> no, you know, everyone knows that. Okay. Where is this W1? The higher is what? L1. Okay, G1. Where is this W2? How much do I have? W2, how much? How many hours to hire from her? Okay. This is what M marginal revenue product of labor. Huh? If wage is W1, Sangyan will hire L1. Okay, W2, how much would be higher? L2. Okay. So W3, how much? Yunna, 
How much will she hire? Okay, even, even Yunnan knows that. <laughs> okay. Is it clear? Jayun, are you with me? Hyeong two. One sec two. Usuk. Okay, Usuk two. Manjong, right? You are with me? No, Sengchan. I'm sorry. So, what is this? Come to think of what is this? What is this? That's SHN company's hiring schedule. Right? We don't say hiring schedule, but we say demand schedule for labor. Is that clear? Same story, actually. I, the mirror image of what? Repetition of not mirror image. This is nothing other than demand for labor. This is it. Okay? This is our conclusion here. Marginal pro revenue product of labor represent a firm's demand for <coughs> labor. This is so simple. Just repeat, repetition of uh, simple application of what we discussed to for, for, as for the product market. Remember, product market, you start from, this is product market, quantity, price. Okay? You start off, you are what curve? Marginal utility curve, right? This is your marginal utility. So, this is now Yerin's marginal utility curve. So do you have any control over the market price? So market price is P1, how much would you buy? <laughs> okay. Market P2, how much would you buy? <laughs> now everybody is with me, right? <laughs> market price is PC, how much would you buy? <laughs> so this is nothing other than what? You have purchase plan. Price will be here, this will buy, you will buy this much. Price this, you will buy this many. Price this, will this many. This is nothing, you are marginal utility curve. It's nothing other than your purchase plan. But in kind of, you don't call it purchase plan, but you are demand schedule, right? This is your demand schedule. Uh, if this is Erin's demand schedule, this is who else? Okay, Mingyang's demand schedule, and this is Zhengha's demand schedule, and Okay, YH, YZ. Sum them up, what, is, what do you call that? Market demand schedule or simply demand curve. Same story here. So this is nothing other than Sangyeon's hiring schedule, right? Hiring schedule. But we don't call hiring schedule. What do you call that? Dem his demand for labor. So market, same story. Just sum them up. This year before, so SH company, MGN company, CWN company, and then GWN company, it's like that, okay? So this is what? Demand for labor, DL. The flip side of there, okay, this is your L. So now we are, everybody is in Gyeonghwa's shoes. Oh, initially, what I call marginal pain. Initially, working is painful. It's not more enjoyable, right? Very minor. If, if as time goes by, marginal pain goes up. Here, actually, marginal pain includes opportunity cost. Initially, it's okay to work one or two hours a day. You're enjoyable, but you keep doing that. You have something else. You have to study in the first place. She has to study something, right? Economics first. And then followed by business and then followed by politics, right? She has to study. So it's valuable, right? As she, as she works more hours, it's opportunity cost looms larger and larger and larger, right? But this is the story. So, so let's call this all inclusive marginal pain. Okay? Marginal is a particular type of cost. This is who supplies labor, firm or household? Household. So supply, this is your marginal pain. So here again, if this, you, anyway, somehow you define. Each one, each labor, L define, okay, uh, his or her own marginal pain curve. 
this is given. Okay, this is Mingyong. Do you have any control over Weiji? Mm. Mingyong, Weiji. As a labor, as a worker, do you have any control over the Weiji? No, you don't. You don't have any. Donggyun, do you have any control over the Weiji? No. You know, you are not so powerful as, as, as much, right? So, doesn't have one, so. First an hour, how much benefit can you get? Now focus, of, focus on your benefit wage in the form of all the benefit you can get from working is wage, right? Is, 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 is money benefit to you, Jiyan? You? Are you sure? TJ, <laughs> <laughs> is money benefit to you? I have had a, a how to dispose of my money. Shall I give it to you? <laughs> okay, anyway, so think about that. You work an hour. Okay, likewise, right now, Donggyun Yong, is can earn one million on an hour. Okay. You work an hour. What's your marginal benefit? One million, right? What's your benefit from working the tenth hour? Tenth hour, one million, right? Hundredth hour. But don't work hundred hours a week and then kill yourself. Don't do that. <laughs> so, anyway. so, wage is what? You have marginal benefit to you, right? This is from workers' perspective. This is your marginal cost, marginal cost, right? Your marginal benefit wage is to you, right? From firm's perspective, to hire a person, firm's perspective, that's cost. Employee's perspective, that's benefit, right? <coughs> so, Donggyun is marginal, uh, rational person. So, how many hours would you work here? Let's call this W3. How many hours would you work? L3, right? L3. If A is W4, how many hours would you work? L4. W5. L5, right? Come to think of, that's nothing other than my working schedule, right? My plan, how many hours to work? Right? So, but we don't call that working schedule, but we call that our supply of labor. Okay? So, this is <coughs> supply of labor. No, everything else is straightforward. So, this is SL. We have everything. Now, we, we have come to the conclusion here, right? So, this is W. Okay? So, what is this? What is this? W0. And then what is this? L0. L0. Okay. <laughs> okay. W0, L0 is our conclusion. Yunna, are you with me? Jingya? Are you sure? She pretends. Okay, this is it. Yunghyun, are you comfortable with that? Okay. Then. Everybody seems to be comfortable with it. Eh? Let's, let's go forward. So we covered actually, okay. Uh, anyway, let's quickly go over page nine. Top assumptions is there. Okay, perfect competition in both markets. So marginal product labor, to be precise, uh, diminishing marginal labor product, we understood there. So marginal revenue product in the middle, marginal le revenue product of labor is simply this easy. So optimizing employer marginal benefit is what? The blank, MRPL. Okay. Marginal cost is what? Wage, wage W, W. So understand that. Then the, some interesting discussion is that 
shift here. This may shift, right? One may shift cover to this direction, right or left. This is demand for labor. Demand for labor is from what? M, R, P, L. Uh, so from this one, any factor which improves productivity of labor, like uh, technological development or training, training, education training, that's what you call human capital. That's one thing. And secondly, from this equation, what if the price goes up? Price of the product goes up to shift this direction, right? <coughs> so two blanks here, technological development or human capital increase. So that's productivity. What affects the productivity? And second thing is that, okay, so whatever affects the price of the, the, the outcome, the product. So remember, previously this, this, this is sold at 500 won. This, now this is sold at 600 won. All of a sudden, MRPL goes up. Right? This is so clear. Nothing could be clearer. Okay, supply of labor, I mentioned that already. The bottom line, bottom is the page bottom. MB is what? What is your MB? Marginal benefit of working. Wage. Wage. Okay, optimizing workers. So, man, middle of page 10. Equilibrium, so simple. Okay, productivity enhancement and wage level. Productivity increases, wage goes up, goes down. Goes up. Goes up. Okay, historical evidence, table two. Okay, history verifies that. As, as workers' productivity improves, wage level goes up. Okay, markets for capital and is that the same story? Okay, no, no. Here, only difference is that this is now capital market, same story. Is that? This is, what is this? No, I didn't say, no, this is collectively called, this is what rental charge, rental charge. You don't say, in money, money terms, <laughs> not rent, <coughs> money terms, rental charge. This is difference between, there are two types of capital market, macroeconomy, microeconomy, express a different story. Microeconomics is research physical capital. You are going to one more capital. But macroeconomics is a matter of fund, financial capital. Financial capital, capital is in terms of, uh, simply put, that's okay, that's a good, good thing. Okay. Microeconomics, when you say capital, that's physical capital. Macroeconomics, when you say capital, that's financial capital. So financial capital is in terms of interest rate. Physical capital in terms of rental charge, money. Rate is not money. So capital, macroeconomics, capital market is, is not, interest is not money, rate, just rate. Okay, here is money. So uh, this is actually figure seven is, I, I think I reserved this for <laughs> capital market here. So pretty much same story. M, R, P, what is this? K, MLPK. Then likewise, you have to take an opportunity cost in this case. So this is uh, this is supply of capital. Okay. Supply of capital. Then this is equilibrium. Okay. Finally, luckily, uh, we, we, we now we, we can finish this one. Right? We are finishing all of this. On time, okay. Finally, this is extra thing to you. <coughs> Useful to know. Okay, so W equal P M P L, right? M P L. R equal P M P K. Okay, P, M, P, K. So from this, what you see is that, this is a, a great finding here, huh? is that they are substitutive, right? You can hire K or you can hire K, more K, either way, 
in this case, this equilibrium between two markets. Uh, one market is this. China, labor market, one market is this. Capital market, two markets is not arbitrary. It is a linkage between two of them. It's easily understandable there. So, for that's very simple. Okay. So, too high. Mingi is capital. Is he is labor? Labor. I have to pay three dollars. I have to pay five dollars okay, to him. So, in five dollars is three dollars, right? Three, five, three dollars, uh, five dollars. So, five, three dollars. He can make uh, three of this one. What is per dollar product? One. one. So five dollars. Okay, he can make six. What is what is the per, per dollar product? One point twenty-five. One point two. One point two. Who's more productive? Capital. Capital is more productive, right? So would I hire more or less capital? More capital, right? As higher, more capital, the MPK increases, decreases. De decreases, right? MPK, I hire more capital, <coughs> MPK decreases. So eventually, if they are the same, it does equilibrium. Right? Understandable. Makes sense, right? So this is it. So time's up now. So any que quick questions regarding anything? So studying hard, uh, uh, let's say, uh, I'll be available in my office tomorrow afternoon and Saturday. Uh, Friday, I don't know. Saturday, I will be in my office all day long. All day long from the, then finally regarding the, okay, final exam, uh, Monday, 9 to 11, 10 minutes before the hours, the hours. So uh, three open-ended questions, three calculate very simple questions. One question I gave you, so you, you are thought regarding the liberalization of organ market. So economic consideration first, plus additionally, you may discuss a social okay, perspective or a humanist, humanistic perspective, you can make something like that. And then you have, Open book means open to everything, other people. You, have, you can bring anything, okay. notebook, or computer, mainframe computer, okay. 24 volume of Encyclopedia Britannica, or anything. Don't bring your mom in. Okay. Don't, don't talk to anyone, but you are free to. Wikipedia, anything, you are, so textbook, anything you are free. Eh? So length, how, how, how long? It's up to you, but standard is half a page. Half a, half a page for three uh, open-ended questions. Standard is half a page, eh? but it's up to you. It's, it's open-ended questions. OK, so anything else? Sung Young, are you comfortable to take the midterm exam? Anxious, nervous, both. Okay, this is it for today.